and it was okay. booting successfully until it didn't boot. Dig deep, Steve, you can do it! OS 9, which is running on the 6809s. Right. I'm gonna go to bed. <laughs> yeah, because it's quarter to three. Holy crap! Alrighty, after a long delay, we're back with more episodes. Some might call it season two, who knows? Anyhow, as you can see, we've got a laundry list of stuff to get through, so let's get on with it. On the last episode, I was about to find out that I'd made a huge mistake by doing that MFX load. And I'd basically emptied out the brains of my MFX keyboard that I'd been working up until now because it had basically the right software in it. I've made all sorts of problems, <laughs> which, you know, makes all sorts of mistakes which I will probably tend to repeat again and again. However, before I get into any of that stuff, I think it's time that we put our little wibbly wobbly VGA connection to a better place. It has to be mounted like a proper machine. So I sought the help of my brother and friend, Andy, who has all sorts of lovely tools in his place. He has a company that makes the original handlebar jack, which I'll put a link down below. He's been making these for your bikes, and it's the thing that goes under your bike and uh, on your handlebars to stop all your uh, phones and lights and all that kind of stuff from getting trapped when you're changing your wheels and doing punch repair, stuff like that. And what we're gonna be doing today, he's got a whole little workshop here with 3D printers and uh, all sorts of shenanigans around. And uh, we're gonna be making the plate to put our my VGA adapter on so that I have a, a place for it to live on the back of the analog cage. Fun stuff. What do you say, Andy? Amaze balls. Let's do this. that up. When it's got its thing on it, you won't notice how crappy it is, but it's fine. Actually, I need the gap around the outside. It's a very technical way of doing things. As you can tell, it's very, very accurate. And I'm just gonna, I've lined up that hole with the bottom part there. And now I'm just drilling here. It'll hopefully give us some kind of markings as to where the Things should go. <laughs> um, again, it doesn't have to be super accurate. Let's see if we've got anything. Yes, we have a mark. Done. Ta da. All right, make these holes big bigger and we'll be good. Okay, there we have it. We now have a thing. And you take this thing. And it's all nice and clean at the back. We'll be putting that through like Zs, sitting on the back, and now we have our little VGA output. Look at that. Boom. Thank you, Andy. You're welcome. <laughs> what I'm gonna do is I've got a little gender changer here, and I'm gonna, oops, did these come out? Oh, come on. Have I made a mistake here? Oh no, there we go. Right, they come out, and then I'm hoping that because they have this nice long, whoops, this nice um, length here, they'll be able to get through the panel onto the board. So let's just um, do that. I've got a good feeling because this is a standard kind of panel size that have right now. All right, it's stopping a bit short. Okay, look at that. Look at that. That's now a thing. Let's tighten this up. And there's enough space around, okay, I might need to move it a little bit because it needs space around the outside for any um, plug to fit. So let's just undo that, push it down a bit. Look at that. Let's now get a VGA uh, plug here. And then you screw it in. Look at that. Oh, a thing of beauty is a joy forever. Look at that, lovely. Okay, so now what I need to do is I now need to put um, a connection for this 10 pin IDC connector 
and feed it through to the back of the machine so that the ribbon cable that's coming from the digital cage can connect up at the back of the analog cage and, um, and connect. Actually, let's go and make the cable. I've cut a length that looks about right. That should do. One, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's a strain relief scenario. going to get fed through the machine. Okay, so this I'm going to be working on, the ribbon cable for the scuzzle thing. This I'm going to be working on because I need to build the, uh, the uh, metal plate and make it all fitted and figure out the right place for this to go, right? Boom. This one is, is it, it says RGB on the other end. This end doesn't have the right RGB because, well, it's got a 10 pin, which this is, but it's on a weird long connector. So I'm going to cut this off. I'm going to attach a normal 10 pin so it can plug right in there. So there, that will go in there. That will extend through to the other cable that I've just made that I'm going to be plugging into the analog cage. Makes sense? That's what we're going to do. Boom. Hopefully that was the right one. nice over here. There we go. Done. Look at this. <laughs> I know this might seem like a small thing, but seeing a plate with the, the VGA connection on it is somewhat cool. So let's just see if this works. Plug that in. Boom! And I can even screw it into it. <laughs> Look at that. So, I've got the VGA plate made. It's now fitted. It looks fantastic. The next part, I actually have to wire it through. Something I didn't have the parts for, but I could cobble something together, which is, you know, clearly not the best idea. But, hey, why, why stop a habit now? Yes, it was a sign. I was trying to use something that was designed for a panel mount to be fitted onto a PCB, and I've got it hanging in midair with wires connected. It was not a good idea. This pin just kind of slid out. Oh, this is a bad idea. All right. I'll plug this in. So look at this guy. Pushed all the way back. This maybe isn't the best idea. I think this is not a good idea. So I'm thinking that I could use one, I've got plenty of these. And I was thinking if I take out the sixth row and I do this and I cut out this shaft here, I could make this into the the side that goes inside the, the case. And then this one is the, com the one that comes to it. I just have to make sure that my connections are right. So what I need to do is chop this and it's that. It's wanting that, so I need to cut a bit more there. Look, I now need to just make sure that the ribbon cable that I've got on that side it fits wire-wise. All right, we've got this guy. It's this. So for that to line up, that has to go down that way. All right, let's try it out. All 
All right. <laughs> Let's try that. That's the weirdest looking thing. It's totally squint. Wow, that works. That'd be a good thing. Right. Boom. Let's try it out. Oh, and there we have it. <laughs> Looks fine. Looks absolutely fine. Great. We have success. Boom. Oh, very close. All right, cool. That was a great result. We now have that thing working, so now we just need to tidy it up and make it nice. The next day I booted it up, or attempted to boot it up, and that's when things took a weirder turn when it decided, no, I'm not going to boot up. So of course I called the benevolent Mr. Captain Dr. Stephen Rance to the rescue. Before I did anything, I cloned your drive onto my machine before anything happened, and, I, and then I'd been booting from that, and it was okay. booting successfully until it didn't boot. Now this definitely doesn't help. It's now not booting. It was booting. It gets kind of like halfway through booting and then it bails. Ah, it's quite uh, frustrating. The SCSI driver uh -huh. is running, is the wrong version. So OS9, which is running on the 6809s, right. is now talking to the waveform supervisor SCSI port and that code that's running on the waveform supervisor is code that was in the wrong on the waveform supervisor. Gotcha, okay. Now the waveform supervisor server task, or what as it was called, <laughs> uh, once you, if you start that up now, if you just go onto the command line and hopefully you will type WSST enter. When you press enter, I would not be surprised to see that same one thing to bear in mind is the MFX keyboard is not just a standard normal layout keyboard. It's specialized, it's got stuff missing on it, it's got all your normal like characters, but none of the extended ones. And this proves to be a problem when trying to do diagnostics. Oh, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I can inject an ampersand from, from uh, here. So I'll switch this off and I'll just plug in my RS-232. You riddle me this one, Batman. There the SST ampersand. Yeah. Then I need to change my settings to go to carriage return. <laughs> Append a carriage return at the end. And I'm hitting enter now. It does a reset, but it recovers from it. It came back. Okay, can you now do a DIR just to confirm that? Go DIR. And it comes up with. Um, I do. That's what I wanted to see. So basically, this is working. This is a waveform supervisor server task. Okay. Yeah. 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 Ye
because this drive setup was for Steve's machine, this, which is different. They're all different. And not all the revisions of the cards will be able to run version 11 of the software. Blah, 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 blah. Cut to the end, some things don't work. So, my main goal tonight is to boot into uh, the old MFX onto the old machine, the, put that keyboard on there, and see if that loads. If it doesn't load, then I know it's the battery on the MFX which is causing it not to work in the first place. Boom! I actually hope that it doesn't work. Because if it doesn't work, that shows it is the battery. I actually don't want it to work. I want it to still have the same problem on a known good machine. Make sense? All right, let's do it. Well, I can't see the screen, but it's saying waiting for software. It might, loading software. So it's loading the software. So I can't see what's happening on the screen, but at least it's loading the software. And as I said, I hope it's failing. I hope it's gonna fail. Damn. 15.1503, which shows that um, this software, whoa, what happened then? Right, and now it's just loaded the entire thing. It's actually loaded the software. It's running there. I just can't see it. I need to plug it in. The whole point from that is, is um, it's the image that's on that. It's designed for the big MFX2 surfboard keyboard, not this. And the software that I had for this, that was in there, that I shouldn't have erased, is the software that was working the most with it. But now I can't load it on there. I need to somehow get, the, get that drive and make it so that it doesn't auto-boot. So it doesn't auto-load into MFX, so I have to type MFX. And then that way, I can do an MFX load to load the known good one from that hard drive onto this. Ah, oh, balls! Okay, let's try that. Hello? Ah! That's right, it's booting right now. It's starting uh, the internet, it says. So if there's been any, any internet problems, it's just re it's starting now again. So it shouldn't be a few minutes. Yeah, yeah it's working now. So the internet's back on. So here's an MFX3 running here. And now let's just go to quit so that this thing can shut down nicely. Let's take this, plug it into here, and see what happens. Oh crap, I can't reach anymore. Okay, off. This is now powered on, saying 15.03. Let's see what happens. I have no idea really what's going to happen here with this software. It'd be great if some things just worked. Like the, 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 the shift key and the, uh, and the control key. But we'll have to see. It doesn't say anything. Damn. Oh! Oh, yes. Okay. I don't know if you can see that, but that is giving me back the control and shift functionality, which is what I lost on the last firmware upgrade. Oh, that is so good, look, you got the keyboard control. Oh, it's so good. Those work. Oh, that is brilliant. Okay, now what I don't have is the uh, escape key. It was at this point that I realized that even if I did get all these keys working, I don't have enough of them on the keyboard. There are some that are physically not on this MFX keyboard. And I have to find a different solution to make it work into functional CMI. Ah, the hits just keep on coming. The next day, when I was powering the unit back on, after I fixed the MFX keyboard, this happened. I can come up and down now, which is great. Let's try F5 to load. Bonk. Loading the different things. Oh, it did error out. That's interesting. Bit of a problem. <clears throat> when it boots up, it doesn't see that it has any memory. Why is that? It just changed. It just one day went overnight, it seems like. Yeah, memory, what are those? I've forgotten. Yeah, because it's saying that all the waveform is used and there's no K free, but that's, that's a lot of waveform used. That's 60, whoops, that's 65 megs. That's interesting, okay. So I farted around with the memory cards for ages, but to no avail. 
to solve this and maybe mitigate the whole thing to see if the memory is not a problem, I've taken this wonderful card from the lovely uh, Peter in Australia and I'm going to pop this in this machine and see if it then sees the memory. So I'm going to pop it in slot 5 and in it goes. Alright, it's in. So now it's uh, loaded. Let's have a little look at SC. No, no, it's something else. So it's saying waveform 0, 6, 5 use. So it's not the card. Huh. So now we know it's not the memory itself. It's a different card that's actually causing the problem. I'm looking at you, Mr. CMI41. Yeah, 65528, and it's got nothing in it. One of the problems right now is I'm using a boot ROM that doesn't show the memory and all the cool diagnostics things. But that's the one I can get working right now. But the problem is, it needs me to switch on and off and go into the whole boot process, go into CMI to see everything, and then to know that it's not working, and then to switch it off, and then to start again. And it adds just a lot more work. So it would be really good if I could get that ROM, the proper cool ROM with all the diagnostic stuff, working. Hopefully that's Steve. Yes! Thank you, Sir Steve. It's a different car. It's causing this. Let me ask Chris in Australia. Peter, actually. So, I, un I unplugged this uh, CMI41 car and I popped in the, the one from the, the original machine, right? But it's too new to run CMI software. It doesn't have this connection down here. It's missing a bunch of chips. It doesn't do the syncing, and I know the RS wouldn't work, but it does have this cool boot ROM. And I've tried this boot ROM in this, and it did not boot before. But anyway, I put this, the new thing in, and it didn't, and it showed the waveform memory properly. And it allowed me to quickly switch on the machine and monkey around with the with uh, the, the memory settings on these until it worked. Boom! Put this one back in, didn't work. But then what I did was I put the ROM from the new one into this and plugged it in and it showed that it doesn't see the memory. So it is showing. So the boot ROM is working great now. It's the new boot ROM, which is the one I was always wanting to have anyway. Since I was a boy! Um, that boot ROM is very informative because it shows you what's going on. And I put it in this one here and it's and it's failing successfully because it's it's not booting um, or it's booting but it's not seeing the waveform memory which is over this and I know that this is good because it worked on this card here and I even loaded in sound the whole thing right so that's not the issue the issue is we know that this card is bad bad card so I've been looking around and um, everything looks clean on the board apart from one little area in the corner here which is really oxidized and really nasty so, um, couldn't be something that simple, could it? Could it? So, let's go and have a little look at that. There, there's a bad little bit right there, see it? Uh, there. So I've already cleaned it up a little bit, but as you can see, it's got, it's got a really weird bad connection uh, here, okay? And um, of course, everything on the board is important. I'm gonna try cleaning up that area and see if it brings us anything. None of these tracks looked good. All the connections looked really dodgy. And it's not just the, where the, the, uh, the connections are, it's the tracks themselves, the traces along the board. Some of them were looking very worn out or too close and had become corroded. And it looked like they were connecting to the, uh, the very things they were trying to avoid. It's very strange. I see something not good though. I see a trace that looks like it's uh, busted. Very tiny, like the trace. Because of the oxidiz oxidization, it's really eaten away the track. And, uh, oh, come on, get out of the wee bag. Oh, 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 oh. Wow, 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 wow. There was a pin that was definitely bent down and pushing against the, the circuit board. So we'll see, let's try. I don't think that's good. 
Oh, 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 oh. Memory waveform strike none. Ah. <sighs> yeah. All right. Many steps forward. Um, but we've isolated the demons. Great. It's not the memory cards themselves. We know those are working. I've identified it by plugging this in and plugging in the other card. And um, sadly, this card works great, but it hasn't got the CMI functionality. There's, there's a bunch of things that are missing that are just not going to make this board work. I even wonder if, even if we did plug in all the chip components on this, would it still work? The other board is the board that was in the machine at the very beginning, and I think it works, but it has got a broken thing over there, and I have to find a way of getting that pin out of there, maybe hammering it out with something, which, you know, there's only so many of these boards around. Um, right, I think we've tried enough for tonight. It boots, which is great. Um, just the RAM issue on this card. And we know when you swap out with this card, it works. So this card is just not seeing the memory, but the memory is working. So the next day I go through the CMI41 card to see if I can get anything to work. Nothing seems to want to work right now. None. None. We live to fight another day. So I've got a card that does not work. It used to work. It does not work now. And I've also got a card, a CMI 41R card that was from my original machine. And uh, it does not work right now as it was not supposed to work. It wasn't designed to work. It actually had components removed from it because in the, during the production of the MFX, there was no CMI functionality needed. So I have got another card, which is a kind of, looks a very sad um, CMI 41 card with hardly any components in it. But if what it does have, it has all the components that I feel I need to populate the said CMI 41 R card and make it into a functioning CMI card. If that works, then that will be amazing. Now I need is an LS112 right here. Ta da! Yeah, there's a few more ICs to go. I keep on finding new ones. Because <laughs> they are, the stuff that was placed on the board is in slightly different places, so it is a bit of a hunt and peck situation. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, it is silly o'clock in the morning. I got my work done today and I got a little bit <clears throat> a little bit of time to do a little bit of work. So I've desoldered and made all the holes so that the things can go in. Um, I wish I had sockets, but I guess we'll be fine. I should put sockets in everything. Everything should have sockets. Mm, it's it's really tempting to put want to put sockets in. Do I have seven sockets of the right length? No. We won't be doing anything with sockets because we don't have any. So we're just gonna solder these things in. And yes, we say soldering, and that's just the way it is. Let's do it. I need to remove you and your resistors. All right, so I have now populated everything on there, apart from this one here. And Oh, and there's this one here. I need to kind of solder them all in. All right, I've taken the CMI 41R card that was in my original Fairlight CMI MFX hybrid machine, and uh, thankfully it's one of the thinner cards that goes in and out easier. The card that actually did work, but um, resulted in me literally having to pull the machine apart completely, broke its tab. Even getting the, this, even having to push this out to get a new tab in is difficult, right? So anyway, this machine, this card I can't use right now knowing that I literally, if I put it in, it will never come out unless I take everything completely to bits again. So I'm not gonna do that. So I, um, I've populated the card that was the CMI41 card, I populated it with um, all the 7400 logic uh, stuff that was missing. Sadly, the battery died, of course. Thanks, Sony. Anyhow, <laughs> the card did not boot and needed further investigation. Okay, this may be something it might be not. This card wouldn't boot, the new one, that I just added the, 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 the components to. And I noticed that one of the tracks underneath on the chip was looking a little bit... I actually complained, I was talking to um, 
Steve, uh, Chris Alfred, I was saying how close some of the tracks come to the pins, right? So, anyhow, it wouldn't boot. So I went down and I looked at the, the tracks and I realized that one little pit had come out, so I resoldered it. It's microscopic. So, let's see. That is gr Oh, did it just crash? There's some weird lines at the bottom. No, it's booting! That's a great sign. So if we load this up, and I load up RS, then we'll be in a good shape. If RS loads, so let's see what happens. As I say, the black helps it, it's slimming. So it's hiding all manner of sins. All right, okay, see my loaded. Very uh, buzzy picture tonight. Seems to go with the weather. Okay, so if I'm just gonna load something up, uh, let's just load um, bass cello. Okay, it's loading, that's great. It has loaded. Let's go to wave edit. Ta-da, things are there. Now if I hit F10, you should see down here, yes, I get a light showing that it's playing the sample. Don't know what it sounds like, but that's fine. Now, let's go to RS. Oops. Cross your fingers. Damn! Ah, so close. Okay. This card still isn't in a place where it can make RS work. Okay, I didn't do anything different, I just loaded into CMI. I went back out, came back in, it's loaded. I just didn't load a sound first. So if I go, this is weird, this is just not, <laughs> it's totally like a memory buffer or something that's weird. So let's just load a sound. Um, let's just load Base Electric 5 again. Does something do the memory allocation? Because that, that memory allocation at the beginning is weird. It goes it's 4, 10, it should be equal. I think that might be screwing it up. Right, we've loaded this out and it does play. Let's go back to RS. Guys, I, I don't know what's going on. So let's go... Um, uh, I, I forgot, uh, load balls. And I go uh, pattern and 11. Okay, I'm gonna do something else. Oops. Is balls got a, uh, an SOS? So let's just go uh, funk. Let's load that up, okay, and now if I go to RS, and it's now playing that. Now we can't hear it because I don't have a mixer connected, but um, if you look down here, you'll see all the um, cards doing their things down there. Whoops. We are in a really good place, so I'm gonna go to bed. <laughs> yeah, because it's quarter to three. Holy crap! Okay, good night everyone. What a wonderful night. All right, that feels great to be back on track. Holy moly. Lots of steps forward, lots of steps back, lots of learnings as you go along. Did I learn anything patience-wise? Did I learn anything about how to have patience and think about things before doing things? Nope. <laughs> All right, anyhow. Feels good, RS is working, um, our machine is booting, the RAM is functioning, in, uh, uh, we now can kind of steadily now make progress again. All right, so we've still got a ton of stuff to do. My MFX keyboard isn't gonna be the right kind even after all of this work to get it working and the 354 board and all that stuff, I now realize that the actual keyboard isn't gonna be right for my needs. I need a replacement, I need something else. I also have to get a mouse working as well. 
We've also got to figure out a whole bunch of other things. We've got the whole front plate to make. That's not just like making the front plate, that's making the graphics, that's drilling the holes, that's making all the graphics aligned to the holes. Do I do that with screen printing? Some other method? Who knows? And then I've also got to get ears to rack mount it into position. I've got a lot of stuff to make. And there's probably gonna be other things along the way that I'm not aware of that it's gonna trip me up. So until the next episode, see ya.